Hello students, I miss you all. I wanted to do a drawing video with you today. So you probably got this work packet at the beginning of the school shutdown and then you might have also picked one up um, just this past week. So in this packet I included a bunch of little pictures of things that I thought you might like to try to draw. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to pick one of these little objects and draw it. And today, I was really thinking about the bugs because it's going to be springtime. It's Well, it is supposed to be springtime even though it's snowing right now. But I really like these little bugs. So let's draw one of these today. Okay, so let's talk about some of the supplies that I'm going to use today. I have a piece of painted paper and some of you probably recognize this. In fact, I think that this was probably painted by first graders when we made our uh, tiger jungle scene and we painted all of those green papers for our leaves. So I'm using a piece of that, but you can use any kind of paper that you want to. You can use lined paper or computer paper or an old paper bag, whatever kind of paper you have at home. For my coloring, I'm going to have a whole bunch of stuff that I might use, including some of the construction paper crayons, also regular crayons, and I also brought home some tempera paint sticks. I realize that you might not have these at home, but let me show you what they look like and talk about them a little bit because they're so cool. Here are my tempera paint sticks. I love these because it's like using tempera paint, except it dries instantly. So it's really fun to color with these and really fun to blend them together. Let me show you how one works so that you can see this. So I chose hot pink. I'm just gonna flip my paper over and use the other side. And of course it's going to look different on painted paper than it would if it was on white paper because this darker paper is going to make the paint color a little bit darker. But here's the pink, and it's, it works a lot like a glue stick. You just twist it up just a little bit to get some of the product out, or the paint stick, and then you start drawing with it. And it feels a lot like an oil pastel. Let's use another color and blend that into it. How about some yellow? So it feels a lot like the oil pastels, which we remember are like greasy crayons. Oh, that looks really nice. Isn't that cool? So it's a little bit see-through, but the great thing about this is that once you touch it, if you touch it right away, it's a little bit wet, so it might blend a little bit. But look at that. It's like tempera paint or an oil pastel, but it doesn't smudge as easily. Okay, to get started though, we better use a pencil and use our whisper lines and make sure we have an eraser just in case. But remember, you use those whisper lines in case you make a mistake, then you can't see the pencil lines if you choose to erase them. I'm gonna move those out of the way. And I don't know, what bug should we draw? I think I really like the beetles because they have all this room on their shells for us to be able to color them in. So maybe we'll draw one of the beetles today. Let's do this guy right down here. Does that sound good? Let's do it. Okay, I'm all set up and ready to go. Here's the beetle that we're going to draw and I'll keep it up here in the corner so that you can see what I'm doing. And let's just practice step by step like we've done in the classroom before. So the first thing I wanna do is look for the basic shapes. Anytime we draw something, whether we're looking at it or whether it's coming out of our head, we need to think about the basic shapes that make up that object. So when we look at this beetle, what do you think the basic shape of the back is? If you said oval, you are right. Now look at the size of my paper. If I draw this bug itty bitty like it is right here and itty bitty on here, I'm not going to have a bunch of room to color. So I want to draw big, draw big, big is beautiful. So let's draw a very light oval. No matter what size your paper is, you decide how big you're going to make it, but make sure you make it big enough to color in. So we're going to draw a very light oval. Hopefully you can see that. Let's see on here. It looks like it's showing up. It's just kind of light. We drew our oval. And if we look really close, there's actually three parts to this beetle. So we've got see if my camera will focus I'm sorry if it's not um, the back is sort of an oval shape and then right here 
in between it's kind of a circle so you've got his head and this little middle section and then the back so let's draw a circle right up here except I'm not going to draw my circle right on the end of the oval I'm going to overlap it and it's okay if you draw the lines on top of each other because remember if you're using light lines we get to erase this line inside of the circle later so I drew a light circle over the top of my oval the next thing I'm going to do is draw another circle for the head because remember it has three parts the head the middle and the back so I'm going to draw this circle right overlapping top of my other circle okay I think we're ready to erase all right I zoomed in a little bit closer for you guys so you can see better okay I've got my eraser and what I want to do is erase these lines that I don't want this is kind of a big chunky eraser for this but if you're really careful should be able to see where you're going and I bet your table is shaking around too if you're using a big eraser like mine okay the next thing that we have to do is look at some of these little details so let's take a look at our bug our beetle has sort of these little um, like a big stripe down the middle and on the sides it looks like maybe that's where the wings would be underneath his shell and then he has three legs on each side one two three four five six because this is an insect a beetle is an insect and insects have six legs spiders are arachnids and they have eight legs you can see this spider up here he has four legs on each side but insects only have six legs three on each side so what we're going to do first is draw maybe just draw a line right down the middle of your beetles back of where the split of his wings is going to be I'm going to make mine go up and have just a little bit more space on this side than on this side we're not going to follow our be this beetle exactly because I want to use my imagination and create my own designs on my beetle. The other thing that I noticed that this beetle has though that I want to add are some eyes. So right here on your circle, I want you on the right side of your circle, the right side, I want you to draw another circle that's pretty big. Can you guess what I'm making? I'm making the eyes. And I'm going to make my circles just a little bit darker because I know I want to keep those and I want you to be able to see them really well. So there's one eye, but I want the other eye to be coming from the other side. So instead of drawing it inside of the circle, I'm going to make it coming off. Look at that. Now it looks like it's got big bulging eyes. Okay. I think that I can make my other lines a little bit darker because I know I'm going to keep them. So I just trace over those. Okay. And now I want to add the legs. So when we look at the picture of the beetle, I like how they did this. They have their front legs coming forward and then the back legs moving back. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to go one leg at a time so that we don't overwhelm ourselves. Okay, we're going to make the front legs first. So all I want you to do is start with the leg on this side. I'm going to make a line coming out like that. And it's going to be at an angle, kind of like you're making a seven. You're going to make a line come down like this, except it kind of swoops forward. So it looks like a seven. And then starting on that end, come back around to make the other side of his leg because we don't do stick legs in art class, right? Heck no. And right here, make the other side of that part of the leg. Great, let's do the other side. One line comes out. This is going to be like a backward seven. And there's his front legs. Okay, we need to make the back legs now. I'm going to show you how to do one 
and then I'm going to go ahead and just make them and then I want while I'm making them myself I want you to try to make them on your own so instead of the legs coming forward like this we're going to make them going back so we do the same thing we start with just one short line coming out first and then your swooping line is going to go back like towards the back of his body and you do the same thing you start at a point makes a little bit of a wider turn and then comes back in just like that I'll do one more for you okay you want to make sure you leave a little bit of space in between the legs so this one I make a short line coming out a swooping line going back start at the point come in and make another short line going back to the body go ahead and try to make the rest of your legs okay did you get all your legs done if not go ahead and pause the video and try to make the rest of your legs what we're going to move on to next is the antennas and on this little beetle you can see a couple of lines this one right here is hard to see because it goes right over the top of the rest of the drawing and the one on the side you can see a little bit better but there are these really nice swooping lines that move back so I'm going to make mine sort of like theirs I'm going to go ahead make my uh, first antenna st start right above my right eye it's going to come up and move back and then swirl up just a little bit the next one is going to come right above his other eye swoop back and then up you could even do a little bit of a curl on the end to make it more interesting okay now we're going to start adding some color so I did make my pencil lines really dark so that I could see what I was doing and a lot of times in art class we'll use a sharpie to trace with so if you're using a regular kind of paper like lined paper or drawing paper in a sketchbook or computer paper you could use a sharpie to trace with I'm not going to use it on the painted paper because the paint really dries out the Sharpie. So I'm not going to use that. I'm going to just use this really bright blue construction paper crayon because I know that these show up really well on painted paper. And all I'm going to do is trace over my entire beetle with this color. And it's going to blend in with my pencil lines. So the pencil lines won't go away completely. They'll still be showing just a little bit but I'm going to trace over anyway just so that it's not that dark gray color and it's this nice blue color instead. I'm going to pause the video and finish tracing. You could do the same thing and then we'll catch up when we're done. Okay, I finished tracing my bug with the blue construction paper crayon and I brought the video back on because I want to use yellow to trace his antennas. I really want those to pop out from the rest of the drawing. So I'm going to use yellow to trace those. And once again, it will blend in with the pencil. But what you can do, if you notice, I'm kind of going right over the pencil and then also right next to it so that I can make it a little bit thicker. And then I can also see that crayon color really well. So I can go right over the top, but if I stick just to the top, you can see that it kind of stays gray. But if I go right next to the antenna, it's this really nice yellow color coming through. And it looks good on the green paper. There we go, our bug's all traced. Let's move on to adding designs. I'm going to stick with my construction paper crayons for this, but I'll use some regular crayons too so that you can see how those are used because I bet that's what you have at home. So the first thing I'm going to do is think of a design that I'd like to put on my beetle. And I really like how he has this long body, so I'm going to stick with that and create some stripes going down the length of his body. Look at how nice that bright pink looks against the green. Isn't that great? So if we look at a color wheel, green and red are opposite of each other on the color wheel. And because they are opposite, they're called complementary colors. And artists use complementary colors in certain ways to draw attention to their artwork. 
They really contrast against each other. That means that the colors stand out against each other. Okay. Need to add some stripes onto the other side. And I'm pressing pretty hard. If I press too light, a lot of times people press very light with their crayons and you can't see the line as well. So if you use some pressure and go over it a few times and press hard, you're going to be able to see that color so much better. Okay, now we need to move on to maybe the middle. I think I might come back to the back after I think about it for a little bit. When you work on your own art projects, don't worry about doing things exactly like I'm doing them. It has to come out of your imagination and it's your bug. I showed you how you could draw the basic parts of this bug, but you could make the head going back here. You could make it standing up on just two legs. You could make it have polka dots or hearts instead of stripes. However you want to do it is completely up to you. Okay, this is a regular crayon. This is green yellow. And we're going to see how it looks on the middle part of this bug. Okay, so what I see so far is that it's pretty see-through, but it is changing the color of the paint, the painted background. And I kind of like that. I think I'll stick with it. I'm just going to color it all in. Okay, let's try white. What do you think white is going to look like on this painted paper? I think it's going to stand out a lot, just like the yellow. And I'm going to use white in between the pink stripes. Ooh, yeah, that looks good. I'm going to pause the video and finish coloring in between these stripes. And while I'm paused, you should pause too and finish coloring the back of your beetle. Okay, I hope you had some time to color in the rest of your beetle. I wonder what color I should do for the legs. I think I'm going to do a really bright color like orange. And on the legs, I'm going to do stripes on them as well, except I'm going to do stripes going across his legs. So they're little short lines, some space in between, so I can still see some of the green coming through. I might decide to go back and fill in with another color in between those orange lines. Let's see how this looks first. Now I'm going pretty fast. I have a lot of practice with drawing. Don't worry if you can't go this fast yet. Just take your time, pause the video, get your legs colored in however you want to do it. You don't have to do stripes. You can make your legs a solid color if you want to. Okay, I think that maybe we should color the head. Let's make the head, we already did pink. Let's use hmm, maybe this darker blue color. It's kind of like a purple blue color. A little bit more purple than the blue that I used to trace my bug. And I'm thinking that I'm going to get black from my regular crayon box. And I'm going to color his eyes in almost all the way black, except I'm going to leave a little dot and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that little dot in just a second. I bet some of you already know. I'm going to add a highlight. That makes the eyes look so much more realistic when you add a highlight to them. Just like that. And I kind of think that we're going to have to put another color in between the orange. So let's see. The opposite of orange is blue, so orange's complementary color is blue. So I'm going to use a regular crayon, this color is called indigo, and I'm going to color that in between the orange stripes. And look at how much it makes those orange stripes just pop out. I'm going to take more time coloring these in, so I'm going to pause the video, and you can pause too to add any last minute details onto your beetle. All right, I'm all done coloring my beetle. I love it. I hope that you love your beetle too. I think that we need to fix up the background a little bit though. So I'm going to use some of my cool tempera paint sticks that I showed you. 
you can use whatever you want to. If you happen to have tempera paint sticks at home, you can use those. You could use oil pastels. You can keep using crayons. You can use your plain pencil if you want to or colored pencils. It's completely up to you. But what I'm going to do is add some little blades of grass around him. Ooh, and I'm going to overlap on top of his legs and his body so it looks like he's coming through the little pieces of grass. I'm just gonna put a few back here because I want to show you how I make it look like he's still on the ground. Kind of reminds me of when we do duck stamps. Which, by the way, congratulations to Lad Rowley for winning second place at the state competition for his duck stamp. Okay, so I made vertical lines, kind of wiggly vertical lines for my grass blades, and now I'm making these horizontal lines to represent where the ground is. And maybe that's where the grass is growing out of. And it's okay if the lines overlap. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can even put some of the lines where there's not any grass. But I don't want to put my lines, my brown lines, over the top of the bug because then it looks like he's buried in the dirt. And maybe that would be good for another project, but for this one, I don't want to do that. Okay, I think that I'll also add just a few little dots of yellow, maybe to represent where some flowers are. Let's see if this neon yellow shows up. Nope, that one's too transparent. I can see through that one. It is transparent. Okay, what happened to that yellow we were using earlier? Maybe it just doesn't show up as well on top of the painted paper. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm just making some little dots with that. It can go in random places, over the top of the beetle. Okay. I feel pretty satisfied with this. I think I'm all done. I hope that you had fun drawing a beetle today and I'll try to do some more drawing videos and art videos in the future and hopefully they'll get better and better as we go. This is a new thing for me to learn about but I sure do miss drawing with you guys and I hope that this brought you some fun today. Take care. Bye.